What's that, Captain Facepalm? It's time for another motherboard review. I can get on board with that. You know why? Linux testing. Up on offer today is the NZXT Z490. Z490. NZXT, they make cases. They're a pretty famous case manufacturer, but they've expanded. You know, NZXT has their build service and other stuff that they do where they'll literally build your, your entire computer. You don't have to use an NZXT motherboard, but they are making motherboards, Z490 and other chipsets as well. And I've reviewed other motherboards from Z, uh, NZXT in the past. In fact, uh, I'll review any motherboard for Linux compatibility testing. Any, anybody that wants to send me a motherboard and say, hey, test this on Linux. We wanna make sure everything works on Linux. I will gladly do that, gladly. You know why? Because there were a lot of times in college when it was like, I'm gonna try to buy a motherboard. I wanna get something that has the best compatibility with Linux. Generally, it's pretty good now but you'd be surprised how often it's not right out of the box and then things have to happen and whatever, so on and so forth. NZXT, they're in the game for the aesthetics of it. Look at this, it's a pure whitewash motherboard. Although, you know, the different versions of the plastic shroud you can get in white or black, so there's a couple different versions of this motherboard. And also, I picked that up at Micro Center. Now, the Z490 motherboard is designed for Intel CPUs. So that's the 10900K, the 10850K, the 10600K, and uh, yes, even the i7-10700K. Although, if you're gonna be building a system with this, it's probably gonna be the 10850K, the 10700K, or the Intel 10600K, the i5, the i7, and the i i9. There's also the Intel 10900K, but you can't buy that one. Let's take a look at the motherboard before we throw it in the box. Has this thing been in and out of the box several times already? You bet. All right, in the box you get the motherboard, of course. Then you also get four SATA cables and a nice proper Wi-Fi antenna. It's movable, it doesn't stick out the back of the computer. There's also a quick installation poster and some additional M.2 screws, or the M.2 screws that you need for mounting things. And the manual, which I already have. Now what you might not be able to tell on camera, but you can feel when you pick up this motherboard, that's metal. This is not a plastic shroud. This is actual, that is real metal. Okay, there's a lot of plastic there too, but a lot of metal as well. NCXT puts a lot of work into their motherboard layout. It has seven fan headers and four RGB headers that are compatible with various vendors for RGB. Uh, at the bottom edge of the motherboard, we've got our front panel audio connections. Then we've got uh, three USB 2.0 headers. So in terms of being able to run USB internal peripherals, this motherboard is pretty much the king. Then we've got our front panel connections and built-in power reset button so you can do some testing on a test bench or, or whatever. At the front edge of the motherboard, we've got four six gigabit per second SATA ports and a 30 pin USB five gigabit, you know, header for your front panel connection. This is also one of the best motherboards in terms of NZXT cam compatibility. Yeah, if you like the NZXT cam software for controlling your fans and your pumps and your RGB and all of that, this motherboard, as you might imagine, works really well with that. You can see at the top, the top edge here, we've got our VRM and our VRM heatsink. At the front edge, we have our 24 pin motherboard power connector and a USB type C header. We've got our two PCI Express by 16 slots, our PCI Express by 16 electrical and our PCI Express by four electrical through the chipset. We've also got three other PCI Express by one slots. All of those are through the chipset. We've got two M.2 slots under here, which we'll get to in just a second. And that is our PCI Express connectivity for this motherboard pretty much in a nutshell. Now, this motherboard in terms of power input is pretty darn good. However, I pushed a 10900K to the absolute maximum and I was getting some VRM dropouts around 5.3 gigahertz. However, repeating testing with an Intel 10850K, basically no problems at five gigahertz, 5.1 gigahertz across the board. I added a lot more active cooling to the motherboard, tweaked some settings. I was able to dial it in, but the VRM implementation on this motherboard is uh, probably its weakest point if you're going for that maximum extreme overclocking. If you're gonna build this in a reasonable system with a reasonable cooling solution, i.e. you're not spending more than $300 on your CPU cooling solution, the VRMs here will be fine for your use case. Finally, at the rear I.O., we've got our Wi-Fi 6 Bluetooth 5.1 solution. Yes, that is an Intel Wi-Fi 6 solution. HDMI out for our onboard video, a clear CMOS button that's built right in and a little recessed. We've got two USB 2.0 connectors. We've got two 10 gigabit USB connectors, one type A, one type C, two USB 5 gigabit connectors, and our Realtek two and a half gig LAN. 
For the audio implementation, it is a Realtek ALC1220 based codec. It has Nishikon fine gold audio capacitors. It seems to be a pretty reasonable imp implementation, gold plated connectors with optical SPDIF out. The measured signal to noise ratio by taking a cable from the input and going into the output and running some software was about 121 dB signal to noise ratio, which is not the best, but also not the worst. It's pretty good for onboard audio. Of course, the memory implementation is four slot is Z490. There's not really anything special there. It does support up to 128 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. The fastest memory that I have is DDR4 4000 and it's only 64 gigabytes. That was stable on this motherboard, however. I'm not sure that this motherboard would be able to push really high clock speeds with DDR4. So it does support XMP 2.0 and up to 128 gigabytes of memory. There may be some memory speed limitations if you're going to go for those insanely fast memory kits. But again, most people who are going for that really aesthetic build, they're not pushing the maximum DDR4 clocks. So any kind of reasonable and standard uh, DDR4 clock is not gonna be much of a problem on this board, DDR4 3200, 3600, 3800. I feel like that's your safe range for DDR from testing this. I did test 128 gig from, uh, kit from G-Skill, that's the G-Skill Trident Z. That is only a 2933 kit, however. It was stable on a 14 hour Memtest 86 burn-in test though, so. Maybe one other thing that I might've liked to seen on this motherboard is more USB 3 ports at the rear IO. We've really only got three four if you count the USB-C connection, and that's, I'm not sure, enough in this day and age. However, the rear I.O. shield is built in, which is a nice feature to see. So here you can see the snap-on removable covers for our M.2. The most surprising feature here is that there's not really a thermal interface between the, you know, the cover and the M.2. If it were me, I would have made this all one metal piece instead of a combination of metal and plastic and actually use the cover as a kind of heat sink to dissipate heat. So I think if you're gonna use an M.2 in one of these positions, that you should run it without the cover. The M.2s that I tested in this are a Corsair MP600 and a Sabrent uh, Rocket QLC uh, four terabyte. Now the Sabrent Rocket is coming with its own review, but I was kind of surprised. It's got its own built-in heatsink, and in the top slot here, even with the cover on, the Sabrent did not overheat. I have another uh, Fison-based PCI Express 4, but not really, uh, microcontroller, and even though it was operating in PCI Express 3 mode, without the heatsink, you know, the MP600 is a, a very similar setup with the Fison, and it's got a built-in heatsink, so obviously I didn't take that out. But running the, <laughs> the Fison with no heatsink and the cover on, uh, it was not in the happy zone. Um, Samsung also, uh, Samsung SSDs, also not in the, in the happy zone according to Samsung's own magician software. However, the Rocket NVMe was fine. So I guess it just depends on if your, your NVMe cares or not. So I think the safe thing is just be aware of that and be aware that you know, you, you may not want this cover. The Fison without the cover with the GPU here and some fans and stuff was basically okay. So just keep that in mind if you're doing this kind of a build. And remember with Intel, you know, all of your M.2s are going through the chipset. So if you're gonna run an M.2 RAID or something like that, you don't really benefit from speed because you get that chipset bottleneck um, to worry about when you're doing that. So overall though, not bad. Now in terms of Linux support, well, there's no NZXT CAM support for Linux, but since it's a USB device, you can run Linux Windows in a virtual machine and then access your CAM devices that way. Everything else on Linux pretty much worked. I mean, the USB controllers all worked, the audio worked. There wasn't really anything special I had to do for front panel audio because sometimes that can be kind of sketchy. So overall, the Linux support on this motherboard, A+. Now, if I were to give you a conclusion or a recommendation, you're buying this motherboard for the aesthetic. Most of the other features are secondary. You also, you know, gotta take into account price. It's actually a very reasonably priced motherboard for what you get. It's not the highest end Z490 motherboard. It's not an overclocking monster. It doesn't have an inspiring number of USB ports, but it is well built for what you get. It has good quality construction, good craftsmanship. There are some metal components here. I mean, NZXT is kind of fighting an uphill battle, you know, partnering with a, a motherboard company to bring their aesthetic to life, part of their build service, part of their, their custom builds. And this motherboard does look good inside a case. I mean, but that's, that's an aesthetic judgment, not a functional one. Overall though, in terms of uh, features that you get on a Z490 motherboard, 
it's not bad. It's a Z490 motherboard. And like I say, NZXT sent me this motherboard, but my CPU that I used for testing an Intel 10850K, the case, all of the other components I bought, most of them I think at Micro Center, maybe a few from Newegg or Amazon. And the reason I do this is to help make sure all this stuff works on Linux. I mean, a company will ask you, it's like, hey, do you want to do a motherboard review? And it's like, mm, yeah, but then you think about Linux compatibility, somebody might run Linux on this. It's like, all right, I'll check it out for Linux compatibility reasons, no problem. And I'll do a video on it, because why not? So there you have it. That's the NZXT Z490. I'm Wendell, this is level one. If you pick up one of these or you do a build, or especially if you use NZXT's build service or something like that, go to the level one forums. I'm signing out, and I'll see you there. Post pictures and let us know how you're doing. All right, I'll see you there.